What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here with the one, the only Dilly Vanilli, and we are here to rank some wide receiver cores. Every single wide receiver core in the NFL. We are going to be ranking from last to first. So basically, we're going to be going through your teams, your buddy's teams, your dad's team, your mama's team. Everybody's team is going to be covered here for the wide receiver course. And we're going to be doing this, hopefully, for a number of other positions. For sure, the running back position. But we're going to start off here with the wide receiver core. A lot of people like to rank you know, some of the playmakers across the league. So we thought it would be a fun topic to do. Dylan, any comments before we get started ranking the wide receiver cores from 32 to 1? Uh, yeah, I, this was a good list. Uh, a lot of good teams uh, have some really good receiver talent. Uh, some teams that made the playoffs last year don't have as much great receiver talent. So it's a big, uh, it's a, there's a big kind of difference between some teams. Uh, we don't know each other's list, so this is going to be very interesting to see where we place some teams and where we don't place others. So uh, I'm interested. I think you guys are going to enjoy it, and uh, it should be fun. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. Who's the best receiver core in the league? Who's the worst receiver core in the league? If you want to give us your 1-32, to 32, go right ahead. Just leave your comments and your opinions below. Uh, also, like the video and subscribe to the Bottom Line View if you are new. All right, Dylan, let's get into this list. As Dylan said, this is completely raw. We don't know what each other, like, it's going to put, so there's going to be some rants. There's going to be, you know, a back, back and forth. There's going to be discussion here, so it's going to be exciting. Let's mm -hmm. start off at number 32, which I think is going to going to be a good way to start this list off. Let's start Dylan here okay. with number 32. All right, so my the worst receiving core in the NFL, in my opinion, number 32, is the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the receivers for the Buffalo Bills, Zay Jones, Calvin Benjamin, Andre Holmes. Uh, Calvin Benjamin is, is decent. You know, he's, he's had a couple of good moments. Obviously, he got traded uh, from the Panthers to the Bills last season. There was There's some good things to like about him, but he's not exactly the star receiver. Zay Jones is young. He, he can be talented, but we haven't seen a lot out of him. And really, the depth of the Buffalo Bills receiving core is kind of lackluster, to be honest. Andre Holmes, there's Brandon Riley, Jeremy Curley. It's just, there's not a lot of talent uh, in terms of that, and Considering LaShawn McCoy was a big factor of the Bills' success last season, he's obviously a running back. They had to more rely on the running back core more than the receiving core last year. It just didn't really flow as well, and I don't think there's a lot of talent there for the Bills. So I put them as the worst receiving core in the NFL. All right. I don't necessarily agree, uh, disagree with that pick, but I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm sorry, what, Dylan. The worst? The worst receiver core in the NFL. Oh, now, God. the reason why... I'll just say my 31 right now, which is the Buffalo Bills. So the okay. Buffalo Bills, I have at 31. The reason why I have them higher is because I feel like the Cowboys don't have anyone as good as Calvin Benjamin. That's the basically the only reason. That's the only I feel reason. like I feel like Zay Jones is just as good as um, Terrence Williams. So like I, I don't really, you know, I, I don't think there's any discrepancy there. Um, Jeremy Curley, I think, is kind of underrated, although he's a little bit older. Um, I've seen him multiple times rip up my own team, so I got to give him a little bit of respect there. I know he's kind of floated around the NFL, but I think he's a decent slot receiver, and I think he'll actually uh, contribute somewhat. Andre Holmes is okay. He's had his moments in the league, um, and I think he's an okay fourth receiver. But I just think Calvin Benjamin is the only guy, really. I know that Alan Hearns had a 1,000-yard season, but I, I think Calvin Benjamin – He's had his moments where he's been sort of dominant in games. And although Alan Hearns has had that one season, I've never seen him have moments the same way that Calvin Benjamin has. Now, obviously, this could change with the Cowboys, uh, depending on their rookie, how good he is. But, you know, and I'm a fan of Cole Beasley, but I'm not really a big fan of Terrence Williams. And uh, I think they also have Thompson from the Bears, who I don't really think is very good either. So, I mean... It's a, it's just, there's nobody that sticks out for the Cowboys. It, to me, it's a bunch of number two receivers and a bunch of number two options. And none of them stand out to be in a legitimate number one option. Although I don't think Benjamin is a great number one option. I think he at least is a bottom end number one option. And I think that's the difference between the Bills and the Cowboys, at least in my opinion. Okay. I don't have Cowboys at the, well, they'll be in the bottom five, but they're not my worst uh, receiving core. I can't agree with that. All right. So I already gave my 31. Let, let us know who you guys think is 32, uh, and give give us your 31. All right, my number 31 is the Tennessee Titans. 
Uh, the Titans, they got Rashard Matthews. They got Corey Davis. Uh, Eric Decker's gone. He, we saw him last season. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's a lot of big options here. I don't think, you know, Corey Davis, he had a decent first season. He, he played well in that one game against the, uh, the Patriots in the divisional round. But as a full season, it was kind of disappointing. Rashad Matthews, I don't think, is a great talent. He's decent, but not a number one threat for me. Um, Mariota didn't play well or didn't play all the way well last season, and uh, it kind of showed uh, in the production. And I just don't think the receivers really produced. And in terms of the depth that the Titans have, there's not much to it. Uh, I don't think there's a legit number one receiver here, and it's kind of lackluster to me. That's why it's at 31. Titans. Okay, so at number 30 for me, I have the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Seattle Seahawks have Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett, Brandon Marshall, Jerron Brown, Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson they traded for from the Eagles. He's basically a practice squad guy. Uh, Jerron Brown is pretty much – he's not John Brown. Okay, let's get this through (laughs) ahead. John Brown is decent. Jerron Brown is not, okay? Brandon Marshall is old. He's injured. He's already hurt right now. Who knows if he even has – a season left in him, let alone a good season. Then we have Tyler Lockett, who again is another guy that's injury prone, who hasn't really had a lot of chance to get on the field. And when he does, he's pretty much a one-dimensional deep threat. He's all speed and nothing really else. He's good punt returner. Uh, Doug Baldwin, good number one receiver, um, pretty underrated, I would say, kind of savvy. Not really a deep threat though, not a guy that's really going to scare defenses. He's more of a position Session receiver in the same mold of like a Jarvis Landry, Golden Tate, Julian Edelman type of guy, but he's not necessarily like a game breaker. So just looking at Seattle, I think it's Doug Baldwin and a lot of really nothing. I know Brandon Marshall is a big name and it kind of pops out at you when you look at it at first, but then you have to think about what Brandon Marshall is at this point. And we kind of know what the Seahawks roster is like, and they're a familiar team because they've been good for the last couple of years. And I think they might get a little bit more respect than other teams, but I just don't see a lot of talent in that receiver core, Dylan. I feel you. Seahawks will be coming up here uh, shortly uh, for me. Um, for me, at number 30, is the New York Jets. Um, New York Jets receiving Ooh. core, I don't think has been very good the last couple seasons. Robbie Anderson's had to be the number one threat, which – He's not a bad receiver. I like him, but he's not a he's not a number one guy. This is actually a lot different for me. So there you go. Oh, you got him higher. Okay. I got him higher. Yeah. Uh, Jermaine Curse, I like, uh, especially in these days in Seattle. But uh, he kind of a off and on 2017 season. Uh, their side they signed Terrell Pryor. Uh, we saw how lackluster his season was last year. I don't know if he's going to be producing here with the Jets. Um, Jets situation right now is kind of interesting. Don't really know uh, the forward movement of the Jets in 2018, with their quarterback situation and Sam Darnold. I just don't think this is a good receiver core uh, for any quarterback that's going to be playing with this team, whether it's McCown, Bridgewater, or Darnold. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, I think there is some decent talent here, but I don't think they can be uh, as effective as the team wants them to be. And I think that's the biggest issue for me. So I got 30s the Jets here. Okay, at number 29, I'm going to back you up. I have the Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Titans, the reason why I had them a slot above Seattle is I, I don't mind their one-two punch, and I think they have a slightly better 3-4. Um, when you look at their depth chart, they have Davis at number one. Although he's not as good as Baldwin, I think he can develop to be as good as Baldwin. Um, I do see a lot of talent in him. I think he's he's good raw receiver, and you know I think he could potentially be a game-breaking type Uh, Then you have at number two, I think Matthews is sort of underrated, um, especially for fantasy purposes. I mean, he's been pretty solid. I think he had a thousand yard season a year ago and not this past season, but he's not a bad guy. Um, He's a good red zone threat. He's not exactly a great receiver or anything, but he's a good number two, I would say. Then you have Tuan Taylor and Tajay Sharp, who I think are both okay slot receivers. And I would take both of those guys over Jerron Brown, Marcus Johnson, and maybe even Brandon Marshall at this point in his career. So I'm going to go with the Titans at number 29. Although I think there's some potential here. I just haven't seen enough. Um, So we'll see what the Titans can get out of these receivers. So that's why they're at 29. All right. Just a couple of spots ahead. It's not bad. I'm going to go with another AFC South team here in the 29 position, and that's the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Of course, they got T.Y. Hilton, good receiver. Last season, he didn't produce that much. I know he was injured. He had less than 1,000 yards, so there's a little bit of concern there. They did sign Ryan Grant, who I think is a decent receiver as well. Um, 
But in terms of the receiver threats, I think their best receiver threats are in the tight end position. They don't. We're not including that. So Jack Doyle, Eric Ebron, I think those are two solid tight end threats that can do well for Indianapolis. But in terms of the overall receivers, it's T.Y. Hilton, Ryan Grant, and then kind of everybody else is separated by such a big margin for me. Um, K.J. Brent, Chester Rogers. I mean, these guys are not producing – uh, as much as I would think the Colts want him to, considering we don't know these people. So uh, to me, it's just you got one guy that I think can be really, really good. Uh, they also lost Moncrief, so that that takes away from how productive this receiver group can be. And it just doesn't seem like this uh, this Colts team is going to be keeping up with the rest of the AFC South. I know there's one uh, – I already ranked one team even worse in their own division, but still I don't think it's going to be a very good receiving core uh, in 2018. So i got to go with the Colts here at 29. Okay, at 28 for me, I have the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Arizona oh. Cardinals, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you have uh, something a little bit higher there. But I rank yeah. them third in the NFC West, right You know, right ahead of Seattle. Uh, Larry mm-hmm. Fitzgerald, we know what he is, proven, proven guy, one of the greatest receivers of all time. I don't really need to say much more. But I do want to say Larry Fitzgerald – has impressed me the way that he's been able to adapt in his career to go from a guy that was mostly an outside deep threat receiver to more of a possession in uh, inside slot receiver. That's a really tough transition. Then you have Christian Kirk, who, again, he's unproven. I can't really put like my stamp of approval on him, so I can't really say he's great or anything. But, you know, he could be. So there's some potential there, at least more than Seattle. J.J. Nelson, I think, is a decent deep threat receiver, but I don't see much else from him. Bryce Butler, the same. I think he has speed. He can go deep. Um, Sometimes he makes some nice plays, but other other times he kind of disappears. And Chad Williams is a guy that apparently is having a good camp, so I'll give him uh, some credit for that. But, again, I don't really know much about him, so maybe that's my own fault. But I just think that the Cardinals, they have a lot of unproven talent, guys that have not necessarily stepped up to the plate yet other than Larry Fitzgerald. Um, plus, I think the new offense is going to hurt them without having uh, their old head coach there and having a new quarterback is going to hurt them. And I know we're trying to take the receiver separately, but I just think the offense made those talents a little bit better than I think they will be this year. So that's why I have the uh, Arizona Cardinals at 28. So my number 28 is actually the Dallas Cowboys. I have them at the – there you go. There you go. I wasn't going to put them in that high. I still have I them thought I was expecting one. number two, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> no. They are, they'll are. they be higher on the running backs list. I guarantee you that. But they okay. are the fifth worst, in my opinion, in the receiver core. Um, yeah, obviously losing Des Bryant. I know he wasn't that good, but he was still a number one receiver threat for us. And having him gone is going to hurt the offense a lot. Um, again, not including tight ends, but Jason Witten was also a part of that, and he's also gone. So now you got to rely on some guys that are either unproven or we just haven't seen a whole lot of. Uh, Alan Hearns, I think, is going to be solid. Um, I hope for him to step up, but I don't really know if he's going to do it with this kind of setup with Jason Garrett, the clapper. No, no, we don't know yet. So uh, the gold clap, man. He does it. He does it in the uh, Madden as well. Interesting enough. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Terrence Williams. A uh, very frustrating career for me personally, just having to watch him every single game. One day he could go for 100 yards, and the next he gets two catches. Cole Beasley uh, underperformed last year for me. Uh, he didn't get a lot of targets from uh, Dak, um, and he could be a, he could be a good receiver. We've seen him do it before, but last season was not a good indicator of that. Uh, Michael Gallup, their uh, third round talent that they were drafted, I think can be good, but I can't look, I can't put him up more than like one position based on potential if that makes any sense. So uh, I have to see where that goes, but there's some good things about it, but it's, I just can't put it that high. So I got to put a 28th as the Cowboys. I'm proud of you, Dylan. Good job. All right. For me, my 27, you already brought this team up. The Indianapolis Colts is my mm-hmm. 27. Uh, the Colts. I really like T Y Hilton. I always have liked T Y Hilton, but the problem is that the Colts have pretty much let go of all of their receiver talent besides T Y Hilton. They've had a couple of guys like, Dante Moncrief in the past, who's had his moments, but never really turned into anything that, you know, what they would have liked out of a number two receiver to compliment T.Y. Hilton. They had Philip Dorsett and they picked him in the first round and that didn't work out. Ended up trading him for Jacoby Brissett to my Patriots. So, 
Now they're ending up with uh, an okay number two, maybe on the lower spectrum in Grant, who was kind of an underrated receiver last year for his production. I think he'll actually have a decent season this year, and I, I, that's the reason why I had him a little bit higher because I, I think Grant's kind of underrated. As well as Chester Rogers, I don't mind at all as a slot receiver. Um, he's not exactly one of the best ones in the league, but I think, again, a guy that's a little bit undervalued. I've seen him in games, you know, have his moments. Uh, then after that, they just sort of have a bunch of rookies who, you know, we don't really know what's going to show up. Dion Kane, uh, Darius Fountain. I don't really know if these guys are going to be any good or not. So I can't really say that at all, but those top three, I mean, but T Y Hilton is the big one. I'll take T Y Hilton over a lot of these other receiver groups, just cause it's T Y Hilton. He's a legitimate yep. number one. And then, you know, it he basically opens up the rest of the rest of the offense, you know, like Dylan brought up, he opens up those tight ends, those running backs for catches. So T.Y. Hilton is a big deal. Without T.Y. Hilton, this is probably the worst receiver group in the league. But with him, they're somewhere in the bottom five or six. So 27, the Colts. All right. So at number 27, I have the Cincinnati Bengals here. Uh, yes, A.J. Green is a top-tier talent, uh, very close to a top-five receiver, if not a top-five receiver. But again, we got to go to the depth position, and there's not a whole lot there. He gets the upgrade against a couple of other teams, like in the case of T.Y. Hilton for Mitch. But in this scenario, not much more. You got Brandon LaFell. I, I know he was a former Patriot, but I just uh, <laughs> don't see much. Man. Hey, you got to love Brandon, bro. He <laughs> caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Whoa! Yeah, I forgot about that. So did Chris Matthews, <laughs> um, Tyler Boyd, uh, decent, uh, decent receiver again. Uh, John Ross, their number one, their first round pick last year, did diddly shit. I know he was injured, but uh, it negative two receiving yards, so that's a good start for a career uh, and a fumble. So uh, that's a concern. Tyler Eifert again, not included in this, but he also has a lot of concussions uh, issues, and it just comes down to the fact that AJ Green. He's really, really good, and we'll push him up a little bit, but not much else to speak of on the rest of the Bengals team. And I think the Bengals team last year, if it's any indication, will not be as good this year. So uh, I got to put them at number 27. Okay, this might shock people right now. All right, I'm interested. You, you brought this up here. Let's hey, see. this is 26 mm -hmm. for me, and you guys know me. I like the Carolina Panthers. Oh, but I have them at 26. Oh, okay. I have the Panthers at 26. And I guess this fits my agenda, although I didn't think about it before. But, I, you know, I always th preach that Cam Newton's better than people think. Mm -hmm. But, okay. So uh, I'm looking at this list. And when I'm thinking about placing teams, I have to think about, okay, is it just potential that's in my head? Or is it actually what I already know? And the Panthers could obviously jump up a lot of spots coming into next season. Because we don't really know what like three of these receivers are. Uh, when looking at their team, DJ Moore, first round pick, top receiver off the board in the draft. I think he's going to be good. I gave him the respect for a first re for a first round receiver. But again, first round receivers have been hit and miss the last couple of years. So I can't necessarily say he's going to be great. Um, but, you know, I got to give him respect there. Devin Funches filled in admirably uh, when Kelvin Benjamin got traded but again i think he's more of a number two option than he is a number one op option tory smith ac has preached how he doesn't think he's very good and i'm i'm willing to back up ac on that well i think tory smith had a good playoffs last year and ac won't admit that but it is what it is tory smith uh he's he's a deep threat he's a one-dimensional receiver at this point and he, he's gonna be there for depth you have Samuel, who's pretty much barely played, and I don't really know what he is. I don't see him being much of a receiver other than really a gadget player. Jarius Wright is another guy that, I don't know, He's he was on the Vikings for a while. He's fine. He'll catch like two passes a game, and it'll be what it is. And let's don't get me started on Bird. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Panthers, I mean, they have a lot of guys, but I just don't know if they have any really good guys. So that's why the Panthers are at number 26 for me. And that's sadly to say, because I like the Panthers. Um, they lost Paul Richardson, who I didn't think was that great. And I think it's probably it's still to me the worst free agent signing of the season. Um, but he had the only other receiver other than Doug Baldwin with over 555 yards last season for the Seattle Seahawks. 
You serious? As a receiver. Like, that's that's bad. Um, this receiving core has Doug Baldwin. Tyler Lockett, I do like. He's very speedy, but there's not too much out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just – I don't know. I, I feel like there's some things to like about him. I think Russell well, Wilson – Marshall? No, Brandon – no, I don't even like – Brandon Marshall, one year, like, forget about it. Um, I don't think he's going to do very well. He didn't do anything with the Giants, so there's no indication he's going to do anything with the Seahawks here. I agree. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's it's decent. I just think Russell Wilson actually picks him up a couple of spots, which sounds odd. It's not a quarterback spot, but he made some of these receivers look better than they should have been last season. So, to me, i got to put him up a little bit higher. Okay, at 25, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. Dylan already brought them up. reason why I have them higher than Carolina is A.J. Green. <laughs> just AJ Green. <laughs> just AJ Green. That's it. I'll get give me AJ Green over every Panthers receiver and probably three of the. I'd rather have AJ Green than three of the Panthers receivers, to be honest with you. Um, then we have Brandon LaFell, who, yeah, you're gonna hate on him. It's Brandon LaFell, but he, I mean, he's a competent NFL receiver. He's not sexy, but he's an NFL receiver. So it is what it is. He's, you know, he's he's the uh, Cincinnati Bengals version of maybe a little bit worse version of Alan Hearns. Then you have Ross, um, who, yeah, he they tried to switch him to play corner, but he's going to try and play receiver this year. And at least he has potential, like the other guys on the Panthers. So, I mean, there's the same potential there. This guy was a top 10 pick. I still, at least for one more year, got to say that, hey, maybe he could turn out. And then they have Tyler Boyd, who I don't think is all that bad. Um, so it's not a terrible receiver core, because they at least have A.J. Green, but it's not good either. I think... What does make the Bengals at least a competent offense is that they have Tyler Eifert. When he's healthy, it, it helps out. They do have Giovanni Bernard and Joe Mixon at running back. But their receiver core itself is not very sexy. So uh, they come in at number 25 for me. San Francisco 49ers. Whoa! <laughs> San- do you have the Cardinals ahead of the San Francisco 49ers? I do. I do. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's the yeah, it's same division, but I not the same one. Nope. I got the 49ers below the C, uh, the Cardinals. We'll talk about that in a minute. But in terms of the 49ers production. I disagree, just so you guys know if you can. <laughs> I know he does. Yeah, well, you already mentioned the Cardinals. I still got them up there. Um, two really good receivers for me. Marquise Goodwin, speedy guy. Um, not exactly what you would expect from a top-tier number one receiver uh, threat, but I think him and Jimmy G are going to be very good. And last season, uh, he proved he can be – the speedy guy, the guy we're going to talk about, makes some really good plays. I like him. Pierre Garçon last season had a disappointing year, but there's still some name value, name recognition with Pierre Garçon that I like out of him. So he didn't really have a disappointing year. He just got hurt. Yeah, I just I, I think he was good when he played. Right? He just, yeah, I just think like he wasn't as spectacular as we usually see them. Like even when when he was playing. I don't know. I still have – that. there's a reason why they're here 25 because they have two really good uh, talents for me. Um, you got Trent Taylor uh, as the number three guy. I'm not mad about that. That's a good talent. Um, I, I think I like the potential that we have here, especially with Pierre Garçon and Marquis Goodwin with Jimmy G. That's why I got him here at 25. At number 24, this is also, I think, going to shock some people. But, you know, uh, if you actually look at it, I don't really feel like they have a strong receiver core. Um, the Green Bay Packers are oh, wow. at number 24 for me. Yes. Wow. Yes, the Green Bay Packers. Um, besides Devontae Adams and Randall Cobb, who do they have? I'm kind of surprised you would put him over here. Okay, Devontae Adams. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I think he'll get better. Well, they got Geronimo. Ger- <laughs> bro, Geronimo. Okay. They got the boy Geronimo. Hold up. Devontae Adams is good, but has he even had 1,000 yards yet? Who, Devontae Adams? Yeah, in his career. I think he might have had one season with it, maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. That's fair. Yeah, um, Randall Cobb, who, yeah, I think was really good a couple of years ago, but I think has slowed down steadily. Maybe he'll come back because Jordy Nelson um, is gone, so maybe that will help his production out. But I don't feel like Randall Cobb, because of some of his injuries, is the same guy he was a couple of years ago. Um, so just those two guys are, are, are good options. Good number one and two, but then you have Geronimo Allison. You have that Davis guy. Like you just have a bunch of like with the Packers, you just have these random dudes that just like come in for like two plays. They have like these forty yard gains because 
where Aaron Rodgers does circles in the backfield That's for 40 the seconds. The and then he hits the, the guy wide open. And you wonder how that guy got wide open. But it was none of his doing. It was just that Aaron Rodgers was his quarterback. Um, and then they have a bunch of other rookies that I don't really know anything about. So for me, the Packers, they're actually the worst receiver unit in their own division um, and ranked number 24 for me. The way you're lucky bastard, he had 997 yards in 2016. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so fucking lucky. You didn't even know that. All right. Now, uh, number 24. Uh, is that the great? Yeah, 24. I have got the Panthers. I put them a couple okay. of spots ahead, there. not too far away from Mr. Mitch over here. I like some of the talent that I see out of the Panthers group. Uh, Devin Punches, he made himself a name uh, last season. Uh, Tory Smith, I don't like. I don't. I will never like him. Um, DJ Moore, I again, I, I put a little bit of potential in these lists. Um, and I think DJ Moore's got uh, some potential for sure. Uh, Curtis Samuel, yeah, he didn't do that much last season. Uh, there's there's some things. Serious, right? I I am not going to slack on him as much as uh, Mitch did, but he's not. Exactly- I don't mind him, but like he's never gotten more than like probably five receptions in a game, so I can't really say that he's great. Well, no, I'm I'm not saying he's like the ball buster or anything like that, but he's he's decent. I know, I, I like him I like him more than Tory Smith. I'm just gonna say that. Um, I, I think there's some talent. Again, we can include Greg Olson. Might be a couple of spots higher if we were including him in this list. But I think there's some decent uh, talent you can develop on. And I think Funches and Moore in particular are why I got him here at 24. Fair enough. All right, 23. This is also a, a team that I feel like is a lot like, like the Panthers receiver core. Um, I think they're a little bit better because I think that they've proven a little bit more. That's the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I have the Jaguars at 23. Mm. Uh, Jaguars do have Marquise Lee, who I think is, again, pretty good. He's like on the same level as Devin Funches. You have Dante Moncrief, another guy that's a, a number two receiver. Um, DJ Chark, who has some potential there. But again, I don't really know if he's going to turn out or not. This is a guy that's probably like, he could rather be a huge bust or be really good. DJ Chark, so I don't I don't really know. Um, mm. Westbrook, he's okay. Cole, He's a decent deep threat. So they have a lot of guys. Again, like the Panthers, they have a lot of guys. They don't really have a number one. Um, they just have a lot of guys that they can kind of throw out there. They can do different jobs. They have different roles. Mark Easley, a little bit more of a possession receiver. Um, Dante Moncrief, more of a red zone threat. Chark and Westbrook, Cole, more deep threat guys with speed. So they have a nice group that of guys that mesh with different qualities. But none of them are necessarily going to scare you. And I think that's something that helped my ranking, helped or hurt my rankings on this list is do they have a guy that's going to hurt or hurt or you have to game plan for? Or is it just like a bunch of guys out there? So that's why I have the Jaguars at number 23. This is the unpredictability because I have the Jaguars at number 23. This is a I like it. Uh, yeah, surprisingly enough. Um, they lost Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns, so their production is going to go a little bit down uh, in 2018 compared to last year. I'm going to try to bring something Even different. though Allen Robinson didn't play. Oh, well, yeah, but okay, yeah, you're true. <laughs> the Jags almost got better. Because they, I think they, they, because of the addition of names, I would say. Because you look at their receiver core, Not, I'm not talking about their roster. Uh, I'm talking about their receiver core, which yeah. you could argue they got better in on their roster. I don't know. It's I know, I'm just saying in terms of receiver names. But in terms of receivers, you look at because you look at Dante Moncrief basically replaces Alan Hearns, uh-huh. which he's a little bit more injury prone, but they're similar players. You have DJ Chark, who they added, but Alan Robinson didn't play last year. Like you have to take that into account. So yeah. I mean they added two for one. So technically they could be better. And they have a couple of guys that are going to develop, like Cole and Westbrook. So I mean they could be. They could be better this year at the receiver position, depending on their quarterback. Okay, here comes the San Francisco 49ers at number 22. Way better than the Cardinals. I just got to put that out there. (laughs) But the 49ers are number two in the NFC West. Uh, They have Goodwin, who I like. Uh, He's kind of developed into more than just a guy that runs in a straight line. Um, Definitely last year, huge breakout season. I think he'll have another really good season with Jimmy I think that something that helps here is they have Kyle Shanahan. So I have a little bit more faith to put them a little bit higher because he'll make them look better than other teams. So mm-hmm. then you have Pierre Garçon, who I thought played well when he started to, you know, get in a rhythm with the 49ers last year. It was just a matter of 
Again, he didn't get a chance to play with Garoppolo, I don't believe. So I think that's going to help him. I know he's hurt. He's coming back from an injury, but hopefully he can come back to be something similar to what he was last year. And I think that's a good one-two punch, guys that complement each other well. Garcon, kind of the underneath tough receiver. You have Goodwin, who's going to stretch the field. Dante Pettis, another guy that I think has speed, can stretch the field, and maybe can give some of that uh, Taylor uh, Gabriel type of effect to the 49ers offense. They have Trent Taylor, who's a decent little fourth option, slot receiver type of guy. Aldrick Robinson also has some some chemistry with Shanahan's system. He knows it, so from his Atlanta days, better than it was last year. It has more potential, and and I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do with Garoppolo having a full offseason and them sort of to mesh together with some chemistry. So the 49ers at 22. All right. All right, not, not, not bad about that. Put him on 25. We'll see how it goes there. Uh, number 22 is still not the Cardinals. No, we have what the- <laughs> we have the Baltimore Ravens here at number 22 for me. Um, I have them a little bit higher. A little bit. Just a little bit. Um, for me, uh, there's some there's some decent talent here. We know Michael Crabtree. I know Mr. Kebble hates on Michael Crabtree. Don't understand it. We'll never understand it. But he makes this team a lot better in terms of what they were last year. He's a Seahawks fan. It's not hard to understand. Like <laughs> fucking Raider. Like, come on now. Like, just give him the due. Just give him his just due at this point. Um, it's not like he was freaking like keep to leave and all this shit. Whatever. Michael Crabtree, I, I like. He's a solid receiver threat. He makes them a lot better than they were last season. I think they have the second worst receiver core of last year, in my opinion. Um, Willie Sneed, he comes onto this team. He's gonna bring a little bit of something different. John Brown. Not my favorite receiver, but uh, a decent number three uh, guy. Um, they lost a couple of receivers. You know, Jeremy Macklin's gone. Mike Wallace is gone. So they had to bring in some other guys. Hayden Hurst, the first round pick that they got as well. I know he's a tight end, but he could be good as well. Um, they, I think it's just because of the upgrades that they made uh, in the draft and in the offseason that really helped them get to number 22. Uh, Joe Flacco is not the best quarterback, as we've said multiple times on this show. But uh, I think this receiver core just got a lot better. And uh, some potential is there for guys like Crabtree and Sneed. So number 22, Ravens. I think I see the names, but recently some of the names haven't really followed through with what they usually do. Like John Brown was good a couple of years ago, but he hasn't really been good since. Yeah. Um, he's sort of had some health issues. Like he was a thousand yard receiver, I think in 2015 or something, something close to that. Um, but yeah, hasn't really followed through Crabtree is still a good receiver, but like, he's not a game breaker. I think again, he's more of a number two, a a, a higher end number two than he is a number one. Um, you have Willie Sneed who I like, but for whatever reason was kind of buried in the depth chart for new Orleans, I think could have a decent, um, opportunity in Baltimore to be a slot receiver there. Perryman is another guy with a lot of potential and ability, but not necessarily been able to put it all together. So I think Baltimore, they just don't have that they don't have that playmaking like flair or anything to it. So that's why I moved them a couple spots down uh, for a couple of other teams that maybe don't have the same amount of big names, but I think are a little bit more solid at the top of their their list. So I'm gonna go with Baltimore at 21. Number 21, it is come, it is finally here. The Cardinals are my 21 team. Thank <laughs> God. Just keep pushing them up, pushing them up. Now, okay, so I have some explaining to do, of course. Uh, number 21, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, obviously, you know he's a Hall of Famer. He's a legend. He's going to do very, very well, uh, no matter what. I mean, the guy just continues to put in really, really good seasons. I put in my potential by – not bias, but my potential level a little bit higher on this one because I think Christian Kirk is going to do really well in this system. I've seen him a lot. Okay. See, I didn't wow. do that. I put I put it on some guys. I think this is one of my higher guys in terms of receiver talent here. I think Christian Kirk can do very well. Bryce Weller, um, no, I don't know how much time he's going to get on the field, but I think he'll be very good. Chad Williams uh, was pretty decent. J.J. Nelson, mm, you know, it is what it is, but I, I like what I see in production, and we're going to get a different kind of quarterback this time around. We got Sam Bradford, Sammy Biscuits. Sammy Biscuits. And if he doesn't tear his ACL, we got Sammy Biscuits for one year here in the Arizona. Uh, and then we'll see Josh Rosen, who I think, to, to me, I did rank as the number one quarterback of this draft. I know some people will have that different. But I see some potential going in here. They're getting some younger guys, you know, mid-20s, late-20s. They want to have some guys 
for the future. Larry Fitzgerald's not going to be there forever, and when he finally decides to retire, um, the ranking for this list will probably go down a little bit. But in terms of what I see for the future besides him, I think there's some decent talent. They got their guy, Christian Kirk, and I think with some of the third and fourth round – or not third and fourth round, third and fourth guys like Bryce Butler and J.J. Nelson, I like what I see out of here. I got him as, as 21, personally. 